Hi, I'm Constantine uh, with Biotech Showcase here today with Walter Greenleaf, who happens to be an authority in the field of artificial intelligence and virtual reality. So if you don't mind, why don't you give the viewers um, a quick synopsis or bio of, on what you're doing? Sure. Well, I'm, um, I have a bit of a mixed background. I'm a behavioral neuroscientist, a research scientist, but I'm also a technologist. I've been in the field of applying uh, dual health technology, developing medical products now for about 30 years. And within that, one of the themes I've been consistent with is applying simulation and virtual reality technology to medical problems. Uh, I have a particular passion for two areas within that. One is uh, how we can help with cognitive aging using technology, uh, support aging in place. And I'm also very interested in how uh, AI technology, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality technology can be applied to uh, difficult problems such as mental health issues, anxiety, depression, addictions, autism and Asperger's, and also neurorehabilitation. So actually it would be very interesting to learn um, a couple of points on how it actually is being applied in these areas and it's how, how, you know, how it really is helping patients. Okay. Well, the exciting news is that we've had uh, AI, VR, and AR technology for decades in research labs. So we understand what works and what doesn't work. And in many of these research labs, we've also had clinics where we've been applying the technology. The big change is now the technology is a lot more comfortable to use and certainly a lot more affordable. So it's starting to escape the research lab, the research clinics, out into the rest of the world. Some examples are uh, we use virtual reality uh, technology to help treat phobias and post-traumatic stress by using it for exposure therapy. We use um, VR and AR technology to support home rehabilitation. So when people ha have had a stroke or traumatic brain injury, uh, they can uh, be guided on how to do their exercises right, do the recovery correct, make it interesting and engaging. Another example is addictions. We've used uh, virtual environments and AI technology to drive some of the characters that we put in the virtual environments to help a person who's uh, dealing with an addiction to learn situational confidence and refusal skills. So for example, we might have a virtual bar, virtual party, virtual crack house where a person can practice how to say no to peer pressure and how to resist their cravings. That's really interesting. So if you were to take these learnings and really try to translate it into more broadly into the biomedicine space, which is largely the audience here today. Sure. What do you, you know, give us your views on that. I think the big revolution is going to be in better assessments. Uh, all, all the groups here that are dealing with anything involving CNS or behavior are using some very subjective um, assessments that are sometimes paper and pencils, sometimes self-report. But with deep learning technology, uh, AI technology, and with simulations, we can now do more ecologically correct assessments and more comparable challenges to come up with better behavioral measurements. So I think a lot of the noise in the data we've seen for some of the clinical trials has been because of those assessments. So now that we'll have better measurement tools for behavior and cognitive processes, we should be able to get better results. And so, I mean, that's the pain of very bright, rosy picture there on sure. its applications. There yeah. surely there has to be a couple of challenges along the way. Well, we have a lot of work to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, the fact that we have some new tools that can evoke an emotional response and maybe teach someone how to respond to an emotional response, that's a great principle. But to build, to validate the paradigms, to come up with the right protocols, to come up with the standards, a lot of work to be done. But the good news, the rosy news, is that we have some new tools. The hard news is we've got a lot of work to do. So there's a tremendous amount of, obviously, hype. You can't read the media on a daily basis without seeing the terms artificial intelligence or virtual reality somewhere. Right. Um, so I like to understand the, the financial or investing perspective in, this te in these technologies in healthcare. Um, where is it today? What are the implications moving forward? Is there a large demand? Do you see large money flows into this field? Well, uh, the good news is there's been some watershed events that are helping um, uh, the technologies cross over into the commercial world. Um, two companies, uh, Paratherapeutics and Achille, um, have received FDA clearance for digital healthcare applications. So that opens up the possibility of writing a prescription software 
for helping with an addiction, for example, or helping with uh, ADHD in the case of Achille, uh, addictions in the case of hair therapeutics. So the business model is cha changing and making it a lot more investable. There's also been examples of companies that have received significant funding. Um, uh, Limbix Health has received uh, funding from Sequoia Venture Capital for their VR-enabled uh, post-traumatic stress treatment systems. Um, Reflection Health has received uh, significant funding, I think up in the $20 million range for um, um, neural rehabilitation. And MindMaze is the unicorn in our space. They've received uh, $100 million plus at a, a billion dollar valuation. So there are significant investments of um, uh, experienced investors going into this arena. And there's uh, probably 20 or 30 really competent startups that are at this seed stage or series A stage that are doing quite well. Well, that's very exciting. And it's always bodes well when you get the investor's attention. So Walter, thank you for sharing your perspectives and look forward to chatting with you again soon. Well, thanks for the great questions.